Welcome to The Faithful Steward. This is a podcast all about sharing biblical wisdom and practical insights in order to help church leaders pursue and teach financial freedom as part of Christian discipleship. We believe this is a spiritual conversation and this is a place where the church needs to lead the way in order to move our communities forward in how we steward God's resources. I'm your host, James Lenhoff, and I am so passionate about this conversation and helping leaders have the confidence to step into it. We believe that if we help people thrive financially and grow spiritually, it changes everything. And I am so excited to join you on this journey. This podcast is brought to you by GoodSense. If you'd like more information about what we're up to, you can go to our website at goodsensemovement.org. All right, let's get started with today's conversation. Well, today I want to talk about how a family can find themselves in a situation where they're serving money. You know, Jesus makes it very clear that we cannot serve both God and money. We have to choose between those two. And I have to say, I don't know if I've ever met a family, certainly not in the Christian community, that is actively seeking to serve money. I don't think I've ever met anyone who wakes up every morning and says, man, I can't wait to go serve money today. I just think that's what we drift into. I think we end up finding ourselves there by default if we're not intentional, if we're not daily choosing to serve God, we will default into serving money just through a lack of intentionality. That's why I think it's so important that we as leaders in our communities are talking about this topic frequently because it takes work. It takes active decision-making and choosing to serve God because the alternative if we're not paying attention, is that we end up serving money. And this looks different for every family, but they have themes. One of the things that I see that is a really key indicator that we might be serving money is that we're hoarding. You know, when we end up in a situation where we are over-accumulating, we are so focused on having more and more resources set aside you know, we talked about this with the illustration Jesus gives us in the uh, parable of the bigger barns, right? Where the fool is building bigger barns because he needs to store all the extra. It's not that we shouldn't have storehouses. It's that we're continually making those storehouses bigger. Now, a lot of times we look at that story and we think, well, that would never happen to me. I would never get to a place where I am that unaware of how much extra I have. But I just want to challenge you on that. I mean, think about as you were growing up, maybe as you just started into your career, there was a season in your life where you thought, man, if I could just have a thousand dollars in my savings account, I would feel so secure and so much better. Uh, Maybe you would think if I could just get to where I had $5,000 in that savings and checking where I could just breathe a little bit. And then over time, what I see is that families continue to set that bar higher and higher. In fact, I've even talked with some families that have three, four, five hundred thousand dollars in cash sitting in their savings and checking account, in addition to all the other resources that they have. And when I ask why, why do you have that much just sitting there? Their answer is, well, just because I I need that. I need to have that much in order to feel safe. This is what I like to call the floor and the ceiling problem. There's a point that you look out into the future and you say, I can feel secure and safe if I just have a certain amount. That's when I'll finally get to a place where I feel content and peaceful and confident. But eventually you get there. And now that ceiling, that thing that was out in the future, now it's the floor. Now you're standing on it. Now, if it were ever less than that, you would start to feel like you're sinking. You would feel less secure, less confident. 
And this floor and ceiling problem is a really fascinating conundrum. It's what really leads to a lot of oversaving and over accumulating because we're just used to having that money. It's just normal for us to have that much money. And then over time, we get a little bit more and a little bit more because we're not being intentional. We're not drawing any lines and saying, this is enough. I don't need more than this. So we're not giving that extra away. We just end up keeping it. And as we keep it, now that number gets bigger. And then that number gets bigger. It's unbelievable how we just see these things we're used to as requirements. And so we need to understand that the default programming will be for us to continually hoard and over-accumulate resources, particularly if we are motivated by security. I see this problem around hoarding a lot of times when people are motivated by security. They will always choose to have more in order to have an extra layer, an extra barrier of protection against any perceived risk. And what that means is that over time, those barriers just keep getting bigger, really just by inertia. They just grow without any thoughtfulness or intentionality. And we end up feeling justified. We end up feeling like it just makes sense to have that much money because we're not choosing any intentionality ahead of time to say, this is enough. I don't need more than this. And that ends up creating this tendency for us to serve our money. I need to find the right bank accounts to hold all this money in. I need to make sure that that money is getting the most interest. I need to be thinking about and working on making my resources as safe and effective as possible. And so I end up building this pile and then focusing on caring for the pile. And as the pile gets bigger, there's more work to do to tend it. And so we end up finding ourselves serving money when we've been hoarding. Another indicator that we are serving money is when we are choosing material experience. When we are prioritizing having the nicest clothing, the nicest tech gadgets, the newest version of the latest thing, because we're trying to buy significant status, some sense of uh, that we've arrived that we've somehow achieved enough in order to live a certain lifestyle. And when we need those things, when we're using those things in order to feel better about ourselves, we will end up serving money because money is the ticket to that feeling of significance and status. We need those resources in order to buy the things that give us that feeling of confidence and a sense of, of importance we are probably going to end up defaulting into serving money because there's always more. There's always the next version, the next better upgrade for all of those things. And money is what buys us that next upgrade and that next jolt of confidence and this sense of status. And so we will end up defaulting into that service of money. All of these things have a root in the fact that they are a self-focused story. They have a root in that we are telling ourselves stories in all these circumstances that there's not enough. I need to hoard more. I need to protect myself. I need to build a bigger pile, have bigger barns so that I can feel safe and secure. Or I need to have the nicest, best version of whatever the newest thing is so that I can feel significant and have a status that I'm trying to achieve. Or I need to tell myself that I have created all of this so that I feel justified in my sense of entitlement to keep it. Money is so tricky in the way that those stories can start to pull us into its service. And as we continue to grow all of these resources and God is giving them to us to step further into generosity, into caring for others, into obedience to him for what he has given us those resources to do, we miss all those opportunities because we are just sliding in to defaulting into serving money. And so if we aren't talking about money, if we're not talking about 
how we default into serving money by accident, people will lose their awareness of what they're ending up tripping into because it just becomes normal. Everybody has these things. Everybody's doing this stuff. It's, it's just what we do. And we need to look different. I think the kingdom of God needs to look so different from the kingdom of the world. And yet, a lot of times we look really similar because we end up defaulting into the same pattern that everybody else is defaulting into. We're, we're being subject to the same forces that are pulling them into service of money. And so we need to be in a place where we are having this conversation regularly and we're calling people to this awareness that there is a point where we have drawn the line and we have said enough is enough. I don't need more so that we can fight against the tendency to hoard, so that we can really pull them out of this constant story of the floor and the ceiling that's telling them just a little bit more and then you'll feel safe and then they have more and they still need a little bit more. That, that is the cycle that they get stuck in. We need to wake them up to the fact that that is a, a threat to their obedience. Because if I'm sitting on a pile of money that's way more than I need, but I don't know that, then if we call them to generosity, they're going to say, I can't, I, I don't have any extra. I, I need this pile of money that I've created. But we need to pull them out, get their eyes up and get them to a place where they can see that they need to choose ahead of time intentionally. What is that level? Make that decision now. And then lock it down. At the beginning of the year, say, this is enough. We don't need any more than this in cash. We, if we accumulate more than this, we run the risk of hoarding. And then that thought will help protect them and give them the confidence to give that extra away because they'll actually see it as extra. If they're falling prey to the materialism, they're needing the next new thing or the nicest version of the new thing, and they're always in this state of upgrade. We need to be pulling them back into a conversation around contentment. What does it look like to not just have what you want, but actually want what you have? What does it look like for us to see these gifts that God has given us, these resources that God has asked us to manage as a responsibility to honor him with those resources by not overspending, by not finding our status and our significance in the stuff that we're wearing or the car that we're driving, but instead find our significance in him and in the kingdom that we're serving. We can't pull them to that story unless we talk about it regularly because they will forget. We all do. We will default back in to serving money because of inertia, because of this inability to escape the noise and the constant pull towards serving money. We can't just do one sermon on this and then hope for the best. This is a constant conversation because there is a constant distraction that's pulling them in the other direction. And so that's the work that I really want us to do. And the way that we do that is by teaching things like the non-negotiables. What are your priorities as a family? How do you as a family identify the things that matter most to you? And then wrestle to the ground the consequences of choosing those things and putting other things down. It means we need to ask our people to be faithful stewards in tracking their spending and understanding where God's resources are going. In starting to set some of the the groundwork in place that says these are the building blocks we need to have, and this is what it takes to make this work. Anything above this, we've drawn the lifestyle cap and we've said anything that's beyond this, we can step further into generosity because we've decided ahead of time what we need rather than always assuming we need more. We need to call our people to an intentional plan. To, to think about these things ahead of time and choose to serve God because the default will be that they fall in to serving money. Mm -hmm. 
Well, thank you so much for listening to the Faithful Steward podcast. Be sure to check out the show notes for links and other information that we mentioned in today's episode. Also, be sure to check out our website at goodsensemovement.org to get all the resources we offer churches to help equip them in teaching financial stewardship to their community. If you have any questions or any topics you want to make sure we cover on our show, you can email me at jameslenhoff at goodsensemovement.org. I'd love to hear from you. I hope you all have a great week. We'll talk to you next week.